Hello, welcome to the now Sorcedura workshop. It's going to be a wood workshop here. It's not finished, um, far from that, but I wanted to introduce you to the way we came here and how we did this. It all started in 2007 after selling our Dutch and art frame shop where we were looking for a new challenge. We traveled around uh, the globe. Uh, a bit looking for a place to settle down after we would leave Holland and uh, just looking for a new start something you should consider every 10 years I think yes we've seen the whales at the coast of British Columbia lived in a cabin on the beach of Robert Creek for a while but to start in the beautiful vicinity of uh, Sunshine Coast uh, takes more money than we could ever come up with we thought about moving to the Gambia, but legal issues made that impossible. Having lived in Turkey before, we looked for a piece of land to get our own dream started, but although the people there are very nice, the government decided otherwise. The good thing about traveling around is that it makes you look on pros and contras. So what's important? Coming from a busy life, being involved with almost all artistic and community projects, having worked 12 hours a day for the last 10 years, somehow a quiet and peaceful place looks like the best option, I think. At some day in the spring of 2007, we saw the view from the balcony of a little 200 year old cottage in the heart of Portugal. It felt good and we decided to go here. Now these videos are not about the restoration of the cottage, just an introduction to our workshop. After a few years we bought the old ruin next to the house. The village council ordered the former owners to take down the second floor because it was so unstable that it could fall down on the street. So he did. All that remained was a big pile of stones. Then we the strange Dutch couple living on the top of the hill bought that pile of stone. A big bulldozer made sure that the unstable wall turned into a big pile of stones and broken beams. How and where you begin? How to move all this without heavy machinery? Just by hand, stone by stone. After the dust was gone we could see what we bought. It's strange to realize that just a decade ago someone lived in this building. No water, no toilet, no electricity. It must have been a simple and poor life for the old lady that spent her last years in this, what you could, well, what used to be the main house of a farm. As a woodworker, tears get into your eyes seeing that the former owner didn't clean out the property before putting it down. The big stone wall went half through the floor, leaving a very unstable situation. A single steel bed in one corner, some hundred year old drawers smashed by pieces of rock, every piece of wood completely eaten from the inside out by longhorn beetles. It became a journey into the history of this former grand building. Three garbage bags full of medicines, x-ray pictures and medical reports. It must have been a worrying life. It makes you realize how complicated we made our lives as you find two plates, two knives, two forks, two spoons, some pots and pans and a candle holder. Here and there little details remained, wooden doors that opened with out hinges, some catholic relics, some old tools and doorknobs. The village we are living in goes back to the times of Templar Knights, who had their headquarters at the Convento de Cristo in Tomar, being surrounded by thick 70 cm walls just stacked out of rocks and slate made you wandering off to medieval times. The first thing to do was get that floor empty by starting to take out all the wood. No, not much could be saved. Most of it ended in the wood burner and kept as warm for two winters. Luckily the two big beams that supported all the others are made out of walnut and survived the 200 years well. We decided to keep them in, although it's very low and I have to bend my head every time I go from one side of the shop to the other side of the shop. But well, it's original, so... After a few weeks of clearing out the top part, by throwing everything over a 6 meter high wall into the back garden, we got to realize that it would take ages to get all this heavy work done. While the wood could shorten by a chainsaw, 
The story on handling the pieces of rock is a different one. Trying to move 60 or 70 kilograms without any help seemed to be impossible. There were days we managed only two or three. And just at the point of getting desperate, the call from the Netherlands was going to make a difference. And yeah, there he was, our friend from the Netherlands to help us out. Just for a week or so, soon we found out that it's a big advantage to be 21 big and strong. Did we have thought of making a hole in the wall to get everything in the backyard? He asked. Yeah, well yes we did, but making a hole where you can go through with a wheelbarrow into a 70 centimeter thick wall of stones must be thinking, well it's mad. But we were thinking about it, just thinking. It must have been about six hours later and there it was. Our future door opening all the way up to the beam of the second floor window. With the unstable second floor half hanging on the wall, supported with some beams, we started to take out as many wood as we could. 95% was just good enough to keep us warm the winter as I said. The rest was cleaned, denailed, if that is an English word, I don't know, and cut into movable lengths. After a week of hard work, three chains and 25 liters of fuel for the chainsaw, the project started to show some progress. Down point, however, was the pile of stones in the garden. We had to do something with it. We couldn't get it out of there. The garden is on top of a hill, 60 meters up, and the neighbors wouldn't have liked us throwing everything down the hill. The olive trees are sacred, so any damage would get us into real trouble. The more you dig down into history of Portuguese building methods, the more respect you get for these craftsmen that made the dry stone walls. I'm not totally inexperienced in the matter. I've learned the progress of looking for stone faces, how to stack them and fill the gaps in between from a Turkish friend during my stay over there. We did get all the wood out and cleaned out most of the space. Just one corner was still filled with stones and dirt. We just didn't find the energy at that time. I couldn't wait to start rebuilding but first we had to clean out this ruin totally. The pile of stones got higher and wider in the back and of the garden and together with the clay that was used rendering the walls it became a solid mountain really. That's where the solution was, flattening out that steep slope garden by making terraces. I meant making a strong wall between the raised up garden and the neighboring property. Now there is only a few pictures of stone to work but it took another three months. We decided to use cement for this wall because we didn't want to take any risk. When I talk about me, of course I mean me and my lovely wife who worked like a man. The first dry stone wall ready after a few weeks of hard work but not complaining though but it could have been woodworking for all that matters. Now there shouldn't be a winter in Portugal. Well that's what they say in the tourism brochures. But we had three months of rainstorms. The now exposed back wall collapsed with a big rumble in the middle of the night. More cleaning up to do, more to rebuild. The ruin had a little side building which we left untouched up until then. But with having a way to go through the building and a place to stock the stones, Matters decided to clean that out before starting with any rebuilding. Still no woodworking involved, but you got to have endurance and determination to get a workshop in the end. The view, the reason for buying a 200 year old derelict cottage at this place in the rural heart of Portugal is sometimes scary. Bushfires are coming during the summer, in this case our view from the hilltop became a dark spectacle. After a few years you get used to it and it makes you careful with fire. Sometimes it's the only way to get rid of things. So at the first rainfall in October you just start to burn everything up and hoping the rain will stay on there. To show that there is some woodworking involved during this first years of the rebuild, some pictures of the fence that's placed upon the separation wall with the neighbors. Yes, it's made out of eucalyptus for some, an unbelievable choice, but here's the cheapest wood around. Now building up the workshop could only start after removing all the walls that were too fragile and some of them even in the way. To make space for a car in front of the workshop we decided to reduce the size by a third. Taking away an outside wall means building another one of course. 
to make sure that the wall on the backside wouldn't get worse during the first rain in, all, in the autumn, uh, I started there by making the door frame. For the first time in my life I'm laying bricks and made the decision to make an arch. The first real building up at last. Now we're in June 2011. Finally we started building something. Now for our garden walls etc it's obvious to use dry stone techniques. However the walls of the workshop to be we decided on a hybrid system. This means putting up a mold for the inside, laying the stones in cement and the backside is filled up with concrete and little stones. That makes it all easier and you don't have to render uh, the walls inside. Now this altogether is a four year project and how we got up to the point where we are now you can see that in part two. Uh, I would say take care, do some woodworking it's a very fine way to spend time and see you next time.